So I want everyone to imagine that you're one of the air traffic controllers at an airport. Um, the people that basically help with landing or taking off a plane. Now imagine you doze off for 20 minutes and wake up to a fiery airplane crash on the runway. <laughs> that was exactly what happened with Aeroflight 3352. The plane landed, collided with maintenance equipment, and nearly 200 people were killed. And the result, I mean, the reason this happened was because the air traffic controller fell asleep and he couldn't warn the pilot about the obstructions on the runway. This is an example of falling asleep to our responsibilities. Um, I'm sure we've all done that at some point, whether it's dozing off at work, falling asleep in class, or just not being able to stay up and finish that project that you said you were going to finish. It seems like sleep deprivation is almost a necessity in modern society. We all know we should be sleeping eight to nine hours a day, but we actually only end up sleeping about six and a half. And if you look at the youth demographic, they're only sleeping less than six hours, at least 50% of them. Now, before we move on to that, let's talk about how and why we fall asleep. The answer seems simple. I'm tired and it's nighttime. But neurologically, there's two key players there, melatonin and adenosine. So adenosine is what I call the tiredness molecule. Basically, as you go throughout your day, adenosine increases in your brain, and it's what makes you feel tired. That's kind of the feeling of exhaustion you get. And then melatonin is what increases when your surroundings kind of promote sleeping. So like it's nighttime or the lights are turned off. That's why it's so hard to stay up late at night. So when we're sleep deprived or just kind of feeling sleepy, the two methods we go to are either coffee or some sort of caffeinated beverage or taking a nap. And both of these have proven to be very effective. There's lots of literature on napping and the perfect nap length is actually 10 to 15 minutes. You sleep more than that and you start hitting what's called sleep inertia. That's that feeling of like groggy or grumpiness you get when you wake up from a nap. But if you do sleep 10 to 15 minutes, you actually get more energy, increased cognition and vigilance, and just a new sense of focus. And now if you look at coffee and caffeine, as you can see, it looks very similar to the adenosine molecule. So it interacts with those same receptors. But when coffee binds to those receptors, you feel energy, whereas when adenosine binds, you actually feel tired. So they're competing in our brains. So back to our methods of staying up. I find myself, I'm sure you guys can agree, picking between coffee or a nap. But research suggests we can actually put the two together. And it seems slightly counterintuitive because coffee is meant to keep you up, but then napping is like sleeping. <laughs> but there's logic to it. So if you sleep for 10 to 15 minutes, um, your brain is basically clearing out all the adenosine that's built up. And then that's also the amount of time caffeine takes to go through your system and end up in your brain. So when the caffeine gets there, all the adenosine is gone, and then it can easily bind to those receptors, giving you a stronger punch for, that, for your daily coffee. And this has pretty good implications. For example, people that work night shifts. They're given some sort of responsibility to carry out throughout the whole night. And a coffee nap might be what they need just to pull them through their shift. And then finally, of course, students. More and more is expected out of students every year. And one of the key things they sacrifice is sleep. Now, it's not a good thing, but on days that you did get less sleep, a coffee nap or two will push you through that 7 p.m. lecture that you dread every week. And finally, in terms of the workplace, we all know coffee breaks are a thing and they're mandatory, but employers should start promoting um, napping in the workplace as well. And that's by providing kind of the infrastructure. So for example, Google headquarters actually has napping pods where employees can go there, take a quick nap, and re um, increase their productivity. So I'm hoping more workplaces will also start incorporating things like these so that we can take advantage of science like co coffee naps. So next time you're in the afternoon slump, drink a cup of coffee, set your timer for 10 minutes, and have a quick nap. Thank you.